Hey everybody, it's a beautiful winter day here in southwestern Wyoming. I'm going to show you how I set up my tip-ups for trout. We're going to try and do just a little bit of ice fishing, catch a few trout, clean them and cook them, and head back home. It's 21 degrees Fahrenheit today. There's not a soul in sight, and it's mostly stalker rainbow trout, so I really don't feel bad about bonking a rainbow trout to have for dinner. I'll show you how I catch trout with a tip-up setup and just a little spoon rig that I like to use. And it should be a lot of fun. So the last time I was out fishing, my sled was not working very well. So I was able to get a couple of kids skis and just screwed them to the bottom of the sled. And now I barely even have to use any effort at all. She just slides right along. So little hot tip for you, just throw some skis on your sled and it'll work great. All right, so here's some of the ways that I rig up my sets. This one, with this little gold spoon, Swedish pimple type of a deal. Used to have buckshot, buckshot fell out. I've just tied on about four and a half inches of mono and a red hook. This little flyer does have buckshot in it. I attached a small red swivel and a small red hook to that one as well. So with those two, it pretty much covers everything that I want to do. I'll rig this up on a rod and this one that I'm attaching the swivel to here. I'll go ahead and tie that on with just a clinch knot and I'll attach that to the tip up. All right, here's one more. This is a cast master. I've added to the split ring a small swivel, a little bit of monofilament, and then a red hook. Now you can see how much of that red has been taken off of that hook. This is a pretty good little setup. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this one right to this other swivel that I have hooked up to the rod. Now it's set up for a slip bobber. I'm gonna go ahead and take that slip bobber off because we're not fishing very deep water. And so that one's all set up, ready to go. Now on the tip up, same thing, swivel to swivel, hook that on. I've got about three feet of line there. That one we're not going to use right now. The fish I was marking are about six feet down. So I'm going to go ahead and put a bobber on. It won't hold up everything but the tip up will so then I just spin this so that the bobber is at the base of the tip up that way I can get to the same depth every time and that's how I have my tip up set up all right so now we're going to take a worm and we're just going to break it in half I'm going to use the bigger piece on the rod we're just going to go in where it's broken slide the hook down about as far as I can get it so that the worm covers most of the hook. Just that little point sticking out. So that little setup we'll use on the rod and then the other half of the worm. Exactly the same thing. Go in that broken piece. Slide the hook as far up as you can. We just want a little bit of that tip moving around on the end of that hook. And then I slide the worm all the way up so that the hook points exposed but we still get some movement on there now let's go ahead and get these set in the water now based on the last time I was here it won't take very long we're not going to drop that down very far just a couple of feet and that should be good for now and I'm going to go ahead and get the tip up set up in that next hole over there Oh, 
Oh, there's one on the tip up already. The dial started to move. I don't have this one set very deep at all, so I'm going to throw the bobber back on just for a little bit of visual. Another little hatchery rainbow. It's crazy how much line that fish took out. set up and we'll do it again not bad for just over an hour all right everybody now I'm going to show you the way I prefer to gut fish so here we have the biggest fish of the day and here we have the smallest fish of the day now the bigger fish will lend itself a little more easily to filleting so we'll fillet this fish but this fish, I'm going to show you how I normally quickly gut a trout. All you need to do, insert your knife at the anus, run it all the way up. The sharper the knife, the better. And then right here underneath the jaw, put your blade in and come out the other side. So you can see that there's the bone right around here. And you've removed that piece of tongue or his tongue. Now you'll come up underneath this fin and slice all the way up behind this bone right here. So there's the gill plate and then there's this bone right here. So you just come up behind that bone up towards the skull. Same thing on the other side. If you just angle your blade up towards the skull, it'll cut up behind that bone. Once you have it that far, you put a finger in the incision you made down the throat and your thumb in the bones, and then you can just pull apart. You can see the gill separated. Both of those fins come off that we notched and then most of the guts come out right there now inside the fish you can see that there's still a big bloodline right there and then there's just some other material this is the air bladder that's kind of how the fish makes itself buoyant, moving up and down in the water columns. So what I like to do here with this, the bloody area, I slice up both sides with my blade. And then I just run my thumb from the back forward, getting rid of a lot of that. Okay. Now I'll just clean it up with a, with a towel. So there you can see, all cleaned up. Just wiped it down with a towel. Any other little parts and pieces, you can just peel off. There is a row of ribs 
the head's pretty much separated, so you can just twist that and pop that head completely off. And then that you can just put in the pan just how it is. It's a pretty thin fish. It's not really big. So that'll, that'll crisp up nice. And I'll show you how I like to do that. Now the other fish, we're going to fillet. So it's very similar, although I use a different knife. So I'll use my fillet knife. We still come up underneath this pectoral fin. Same thing, we make that angle behind that bone. Once you make that cut, you turn the blade and you just follow that spine all the way down. And there you've removed FLA. So you can see the spine right here. We kept the blade right up against it. The guts are all still for the most part inside. So now we can flip that fish over and do the other side. There you can see we've removed almost all of the meat. There's a few little pieces in there where there's still a touch of meat, but there's not a lot of waste. If you're in a situation where you're going to eat the entire fish, once it's cooked, the bones pull out super easy. So I really don't worry about it all that much. So we can discard this part of the fish from the fillets. We'll finish those up now. We just need to trim out the ribs. Just get the blade just underneath and follow the ribs down. There's a little section of ribs right up here as well. So we'll get that piece out. Now I like the skin on trout, so I tend not to fillet off the skin, but you could fillet off the skin too if you wanted. Now there will be a very small row right here of some pin bones. They're very small. You can pick them out with tweezers. They're specialty fish tweezers. I picked these up just off of Amazon. But you can feel the bones. And then if you pull them forward, you can just pull. You can see that bone on the tip of my finger there. You can just go down through and pull out all the bones. And you're just pulling up towards the head. They're pretty small bones. It's not a giant fish, so I'm really not going to worry about it. So that fillet is done, ready to cook. We'll tidy up this other fillet. Take off that dorsal fin. Here towards the back, there's one other fin there, the adipose fin. And then the same thing underneath those ribs. Keep that blade nice and tight to the ribs. And that fillet is finished also. So that's what it looks like when you get two fillets. That's what it looks like if you're just going to straight gut them. Now if you were to have left the head on, you can gut a fish on the stream or on the lake leave the head on and still be able to carry it around by using a Y stick. And I'll have to show you 
a video of how I do that. That was something that was taught to me by my father, who was taught by his father, and I'm sure it was passed on down. All right, we got the cast iron heating up on the stove. It's starting to get nice and warm. We'll go ahead and throw in a little bit of bacon grease. I don't have my tailgate super level, so it's gonna slope a little bit here. So we'll go ahead and get that bacon grease nice and hot. I'm also gonna put in just a little bit of butter. Now we wanna make sure we put our fish in before that butter starts to brown. But we want it nice and mixed up with the bacon grease. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I did bring a great big slice of sourdough. This is from my sourdough bread that I got a starter from Alaska from a gentleman who was in the Coast Guard. And I've been growing that sourdough now for a little over a month. And it is an absolutely delicious blend. Now we'll go ahead, it's just about to start browning that butter. For the smaller fish, we're just gonna lay him in as is. It's exactly how we want it. Now with the fillets, you can do it same way. Just drop one in there. You can hear it start to sizzle. So you can see it tighten up and shrink. Then the other thing you could do with the fillet is you can drop it in a cornmeal mix. Now before that shrinks up too much, we're gonna flip it over. small fish over. You can see how he's starting to curl as well. We'll start to curl him on the other side and get that to level out. So that piece of fish just has a little bit of cornmeal. that flip back over. That's ah, soft. Fresh is fresh is fresh. Now, if you're a person that likes seasonings, the lemon pepper is about as good as it gets. At least I think. Doesn't need a lot, but just a sprinkle. There's quite a bit of salt in it too. That's why I'm not using salt and pepper. You can see the color change where it's starting to become done. You can finish it to whatever level you want. And it's a super fresh. You could make it into a ceviche if you wanted to. I like that skin to be nice and crispy. Now another thing you can do if you don't like the skin of the trout and you want to leave them whole like the smaller one you can wrap the entire thing in tin foil and then cook it the same way. The tin foil will stick to the skin of the trout. So once it's done cooking, you can just peel that tin foil off and it takes the skin right off. Starting to get kind of that brown crispiness to it. There's just something about cast iron that appeals to me. Now if your pan's hot enough at the get-go, I underestimated it a little bit with it only being 21 degrees today. You'll get a crispier skin much, much quicker. And then you don't have to flip them as often as I have. And you see that last flip, that piece of meat started to fall out. So these are done. plate it up we'll throw in some sourdough to heat up that's plenty of cooking on both of these now that it's cooked the skin will just peel right off of there if you like the skin crispy you can leave it in the pan I just don't like overcooking the trout 
we can make some trout skin potato chips here. Get that trout with just a little bit of that lemon pepper. Get those skins too. There you can see those pin bones that I was talking about. Once you get down to the tail section, there aren't any. But you can see how the meat will just flake right off of there. But then that way, you can see there's basically no waste when you cook it all together. Oh, that is outstanding. Well, even though it's bright and sunny, got a bit of a storm rolling in now. So I think I'm going to pack up and head back out of here before I get stuck. Sourdough and fresh trout. Doesn't get much better than that.